was 2007. I was head of technology for a global sports and entertainment company at the time. I was working in London and we were working on a project which is now called the O2 London. It used to be called the Millennium Dome. It was horrendously behind schedule, three months behind to be exact. London was writing all kinds of negative things about the American company that was coming into London. So there was a lot of news and a lot of negativity going on surrounding what was going on in this Millennium Dome. So a little history. The Millennium Dome was built by the monarchy for 2000, for the year 2000, and it was a celebration. And it was supposed to be this great um, trade center. And it was is the world's largest dome, the world's largest structure of its kind. But it was a huge dud. And for five years, it sat doing nothing. And finally, we as an American company got involved. And we decided to create an arena and a whole entertainment district within the dome. But nobody outside of the project really understood what was going on. So there was a lot of negativity. We were three months behind schedule, way over budget, and we had to open the facility on, I believe it was June 24th, 2007. Bon Jovi was opening. And if you've ever seen Bon Jovi in person, they are phenomenal in concert. Anyway, and they're huge in London. So anyway, no matter what, we had to open. I was responsible for the team that was putting all of the technology into the structure, which was three months behind construction schedule. That means I had no place to put my IT stuff. So in order to get things up and running, it was literally seemed to be impossible. Now, the moral of the story is we opened and it was a phenomenal hit. But to get there, I had to dig really deep in, in an area that I didn't really understand at the time. If you would have asked me back in 2007 what the secret to success was, I would have said, where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm sure we've all heard that. I would not have understood. It wasn't until 2010 when I was to quit my job and then five years later become a minister. So I didn't really read The Course of Miracles yet. I hadn't even known it existed and I really didn't understand the principles. But what I did intuitively get is that nothing was impossible if I believed it could be. And where there is a will, there is a way. And the way that manifested for me was literally just showing up and believing that I didn't have to know how it was going to work and the project was going to open on time. I just had to know that it was. And being responsible for a team, I had to inspire the others with the same kind of belief. As a team, this became possible through just showing up and doing the work. And so quite literally, I would show up and we had a vendor that was putting in uh, responsible for actually doing the majority of the configuration and the work for the IT within the arena and within the dome itself. And they would show up to suits every in suits every day at the construction site. I'm wearing a hard hat. I'm filthy jeans, the proper shoes, and they're in suits. And I remember one day sitting them down and saying, you know what? Let's sit down here on the ground because we're in a construction site. There's no place to sit. They're like, we can't sit down in our suits. I'm like, exactly. You need to show up in proper clothing to start. We need to show up and we need to get down to business. But we have a project plan and we're three months behind. It's going to take us a few days just to rewrite our plan. I suggested rather firmly we don't have time to write a plan. We just need to show up every morning prepared to work. We'll meet at 8 a.m. in the morning together and we will decide based on what other kind of havoc is going on in the construction site, what we can do that day. And we will get work done every single day and we will open on time because we have no choice. And they agreed. They made me write something. It was some legal document that said, okay, you're not responsible because there's no project plan. We're just going to show up and throw our teams to the job site and hope it works. And it worked. And I remember, and it was a phenomenal success. The whole project was a phenomenal success, overnight success. And it's been a number one venue in the world ever since it opened. But I remember during that process, I'd be taking a shower in the morning and I'd be thinking, I don't have a clue how it's going to happen. 
I just believe that it will. And in that moment, intuitively understanding that the how wasn't something I get to know right now. It's more about a belief in a process that's bigger than me, something that's bigger than myself, Michelle, the person who was playing the role of the head of IT at that time. And so in this particular episode of Breadcrumbs from the Soul, we're going to talk about how the principles found in A Course in Miracles explain why that belief, even though all the circumstances look like it could be impossible, how that belief in the possibilities and how that dedication to that belief made it possible for that circumstance and when applied in our lives can make anything possible. Also, I'm going to record a meditation for you this week and it's going to help you and whoever listens to it, about five minutes, to uh, attune yourself to that field of um, powerful beingness that allows all possibilities to be possible. So the field of possibilities and opening yourself up to that realm of possibilities. And so I invite you to listen to that meditation. I'll throw a link at the end of this video. So to talk about how it is that this happens, you believe in something that seems like it's impossible, and yet, ha, huh, it's not. I want to read something that I wrote a couple days ago. Life began in earnest the moment that I woke up and realized that I'm not supposed to know the answers. I'm supposed to know where my passion is. I'm supposed to feel the difference between good and bad. And when something feels good, I'm supposed to follow it. Not because I know what it means, but because I trust that there, that where it leads me is exactly where I'm supposed to be. So, it's a trust in that something else that's bigger than myself. And here's where it gets a little interesting. I'm going to read a quote from A Course in Miracles. And this is from Lesson 47, which happens to be the lesson that I'm on, coincidentally, as of yesterday. And Lesson 47 in the workbook is God is the strength in which I trust. And it says, if you are trusting in your own strength, you have every reason to be apprehensive, anxious, and fearful. What can you predict or control? What is there in you that can be counted on? What would give you the ability to be aware of all the facets of any problem and to resolve them in such a way that only good can come of it. And why this lesson speaks to me right now, and how I think that explains why it was possible for us to open and implement technology in a project that was three months late, when it just seemed impossible, was that I believed and our team believed together, we jointly believed that it was possible and we jointly under we all understood that there was factors outside of ourselves that were delivering this to us in participation with us as opposed to us thinking there's something i got to do and affirming it will happen that is my belief interesting thing about belief it comes true so our circumstances support what our belief system is so in our episode today, I want to talk about trust and the fact that we aren't supposed to know all the answers. And it is about trust and it's about trusting who or what. It's about trusting ourselves. And this is where it gets a little, okay, it's not about trusting the little me, Michelle. It's about trusting the higher me that part of me, which is the essence of God. So we are a part of God, 
God extended love and therefore we are. So God extended love to us, through us. It's God's essence which is in us. Now, I feel that this is the same thing as the soul. I feel this is what people refer to when they say Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit within. This is God's essence within us. And that part of us still thinks with God shares the one mind, the one heart, the one life with God. God has all the answers. And therefore, so do we, but at a level that's not quite conscious to us. So we are trusting not in our little selves, that part of us that we identify with as our body and what we look like and what our job is here on the world and this type, but it's that part of us, that higher self, which is our true self as the extension of God, extension of love, extension of light, the light and the love of the universe. That is our true self. And that's what we believe in when we are taking what others might feel is a leap of faith in our life. We are believing that we have all the answers. And as A Course in Miracles says, we, when we believe in ourselves, I can make this happen. I'm the one climbing the ladder. Well, you will go up that ladder in life. However, you will experience all the things that come with separating yourself off from everybody else. All the loneliness, all the pain, the suffering, all the effort involved in it. It's not designed to be uh, hard. It doesn't have to be difficult for us. It is a matter of faith that we are participating in a larger process of life, that life is loving, and that if we are willing to place our faith in trust that we don't have all the answers, but we have immediate access to all of the answers simply by allowing ourselves to follow our intuition in every one of life's circumstances. Within us is this eternal essence and we can call upon this at any time. What we have to do, so our greatest learning here in this earthly form is the learning of listening to our eternal essence, that part of us which is always connected to the greater good, the all. And in allowing ourselves, trusting and having the courage to step forward when our truth speaks to us. And the important thing for us to know is that the answers, God's answers, are loving answers. And we as humans, we are limiting ourselves to only this earthly experience. So I only know what Michelle knows. I don't know everything that my neighbor knows. I simply don't. They come from another country. I don't know what they know. I haven't had their experience. I couldn't possibly know what is best for them when I make a choice. So if I'm going to choose to plant something outside, I don't know what's going to be best for me and best for them. I can tell you what's going to look really good outside my door, but I can't tell you what's going to be best for the all. But I have even those tiniest of answers available to me if I just allow myself to intuitively know where would be the best place to position a plant. What type of plant? They have a child. Maybe there are plants that are poisonous to children. What if they have an animal, a dog? Maybe there's plants that are poisonous. So it's about allowing yourself to go within, ask the questions, believing that there are answers. Now here's the tough part. Here, this is the really tough part. Listening and following your intuition. And this is why it's tough. Because we think we know the answers. We think, I know a tree that blocks our view is going to be best for both of us. Well, that may not be best for both of us. There could be blocking the sun that comes in the only window that they have. We don't know what that truth is. So if I go in and I say 
to my higher self, what should I plant outside? And the answer is, well, let's plant a little shrub, make sure that it's nothing poisonous to an animal, and that's the best thing. And I might think, well, that's ridiculous. I'm still going to see in their window. What's the privacy in that? Well, that's the, that's the time you got to stop listening to the head and listen to the intuition. Why? Because the answers that only help you are not necessarily the loving answers that are best for the all. When you are in tune with the all and participating in the greater good of all, it speeds up the delivery of all that you desire. When you, because it's loving, when you put love out into the universe, love comes back to you. Love is abundance. Love is success in all forms. Love is love. Love is hope, joy. And that is what you're putting out. When you are willing to follow your intuition, even though your brain or your ego might want something else, I invite you to try a couple of simple steps. And that is, as you are going through your days, whether they are big questions or little questions, allow yourself to step back from what you immediately think you just want for you and your family. Allow yourself to step back and consider what would be best in this situation. Allow yourself to resonate. You may even want to use the meditation that I've done, about a five-minute meditation that I've done. Connecting to the realm of possibilities. What are all the possibilities in this given circumstance? As things flow to you, consider the outcome. And as you're considering the outcome, pay attention to how you feel. If you feel really good about it, if it feels right, that is the way you should go. If there's any question about it, if there's any questions, well, I'm not sure I really would like a tree that blocks our view, but I'm not sure that would be best for them. I don't know. Maybe I should ask them. Yeah, maybe you should. And so if you feel good and clear and it feels right, move in that direction. Make that choice. Ask for guidance. Tell me other, come up with other, be open for other ideas. Allow them to flow in. You'll be amazed at what could happen. Take a pen and paper. Say to yourself, what are two ways I can approach this? Number one, I can just put a tree up there that's going to block my view. And then number two, I can go over and ask them. And then say to yourself, well, I'm going to leave them on. I'm going to ask my higher self. I'm going to ask Holy Spirit, is there any other possibilities here? And just be quiet for a moment and listen. You will be amazed at the information that flows through you. Write it down. And it might be a whole other possibility that you haven't even considered. At the end of the day, if you consider and then move towards that which makes you feel good, that which you feel clear and clean about, you are on the right path. Don't question it. Just step forward that way. I hope that you find these steps to be useful. And I hope that you enjoy the meditation. I look forward to hearing your feedback. And for you to visit me again at the next episode of Breadcrumbs from the Soul. And until then, I hope that you have a blessed week. Mm-hmm.